Welcome to another tutorial video regarding hydrometeorology. This time, I will show you the different weather measuring instruments used even up to these days. These instruments are classified to the following categories. Temperature measuring instruments, pressure measuring instruments, humidity measuring instruments, precipitation measuring instruments, cloud measuring instruments, evaporation measuring instruments, sunshine measuring instruments, and wind measuring instruments. Before we proceed, please like, subscribe and click the notification bell. We begin with the atmospheric temperature measuring instruments. We have the thermometer. It measures the degree of hotness or coldness of a given substance. It operates on the principle of thermal expansion of the material used. Examples are liquids like mercury and alcohol, metallic materials and more. Mercury is one of the liquids very sensitive to changes of temperature. When the substance to be measured is warm, mercury expands and rises in the capillary tube. When it cools, mercury contracts. Next, minimum maximum thermometer. A maximum thermometer has a constriction above the bulb that permits the mercury to rise in the capillary tube but does not allow it to descend the capillary tube unless the thermometer is reset. The highest point that the mercury reaches indicates the maximum temperature for the period. The minimum thermometer, on the other hand, gives the lowest temperature. It uses colored alcohol because of its low freezing point. It is placed at an angle of about 20 degrees from the horizontal. The black float called index needle is pulled downslope to the lowest temperature of the day by two forces. First, the surface tension at the top of the alcohol column, and second, the force of gravity. Next, we have the thermograph. A thermograph is an instrument that records air temperature continuously on graphing paper. It usually consists of a cylinder made to revolve once each week by means of clockworks inside. A sheet of graph paper is fastened on the outside. A pen point that rests on the paper traces the temperature curve, according to the expansion and contraction of a sensitive metallic coil or strip corresponding to the reading of a thermometer. These instruments are housed in a thermometer shelter which has double louvered sides and a double top roofing design to permit air to circulate freely through the shelter. Next, let us discuss the instruments used in measuring atmospheric pressure. We begin with the mercurial barometer. A mercurial barometer is a simple barometer made by filling a glass tube 32 inches long with mercury and inverting it so that the open end of the tube is below the surface of mercury in a cistern. The height of the mercury column is measured by sliding a vernier attached on a scale. To obtain accurate measurements, corrections are made for temperature expansion of the instrument, gravity and latitude. Values are read in millibars, millimeters or inches of mercury. Next, the aneroid barometer. An aneroid barometer is made by removing the air from a thin, circular, metallic box. With practically no air on the inside the box would collapse. A spring is installed to limit the collapse of the box commensurate to the air pressure or weight of the column of air on the box. If one side of the box is fixed, the other side will move due to changes in atmospheric pressure. The surface of the metallic box is corrugated in order for the box to collapse and return uniformly. The movement of the spring causes a pointer to move over a scale of figure corresponding to the readings of a mercury barometer. Next, the barograph. A barograph is a recording barometer. The pen point that traces the pressure curve on the paper is made to move up or down by means of a series of levers attached to aneroid cells or metallic boxes in tandem. The use of aneroid cells in tandem provide a more pronounced response to changes in atmospheric pressure than would be indicated by a single aneroid cell of the same size. Next, we proceed with the instruments used to measure humidity. We begin with the sling psychrometer. The sling psychrometer consists of a dry and wet bulb thermometer. The term bulb refers to that portion of the glass tube where the mercury is stored. The dry and wet bulbs are exactly alike in construction. The only difference is that the wet bulb has a piece of muslin cloth or wick wrapped around its bulb and which is dipped in water shortly before the psychrometer is read. Next, 
The hygrometer. The hygrometer is less accurate than the psychrometer. It uses human hair from which the oil has been removed by using ether. The hair becomes longer as the relative humidity of the air increases. This change can be made to move an indicator needle which moves over a scale, the graduations of which reads from 0% to 100%. Next, the hygrothermograph. The hygrothermograph records both relative humidity and temperature on graph paper in the same manner as the thermograph and barograph do. Next, we proceed with the instruments used to measure precipitation. First, we have the 8 inches rain gauge. An 8 inch rain gauge has an inside diameter of exactly 8 inches above a funnel that conducts rain into a cylindrical measuring tube or receiver. The volume of the collector is 10 times the volume of the measuring tube. Therefore the actual depth of rainfall is increased 10 times on being collected in the smaller measuring tube. To measure the amount of rainfall accumulated in the measuring tube, a thin measuring stick with the magnified scale printed on its face is used. The precisely dimensioned measuring tube has a capacity representative of only 2 inches, which is equal to 50.8 mm on flat level ground. Rainfall exceeding this amount spills into the overflow can but can be easily measured by pouring it into the measuring tube for total rainfall. Next, we have the tipping bucket rain gauge. It is an upright cylinder that has funnel-shaped collector. The precipitation collected by the collector empties into one side of a tipping bucket, an inverted triangular contraption partitioned transversely at its center, and is pivoted about a horizontal axis. Once one compartment is filled with rain, it tips, spilling out the water and placing the other half of the bucket under the funnel. The tipping activates a mercury switch causing an electrical current to move the pen in the recorder. Each tipping is equal to one half millimeter of rainfall. Next, we proceed with the instruments used to measure cloud height. First, we have the ceiling light projector. A ceiling light projector projects vertically a narrow beam of light onto a cloud base. The height of the cloud base is determined by using a clinometer located at a known distance from the projector to measure the elevation angle included by the illuminated spot on the cloud, the observe, and the projector. From trigonometry, the height of the cloud base is equal to the distance of the observer from the ceiling light projector multiplied by the tangent of the elevation angle. Second, the ceiling balloon. Another way of determining the height of the cloud base is by using a ceiling balloon. A ceiling balloon is a meteorological balloon whose rate of ascent has been predetermined. It is filled with gas lighter than air, usually hydrogen, and released. The time of release and the time the balloon disappears into the cloud are recorded. The time difference multiplied by the rate of ascent will give the height of the cloud base. Next. We proceed with the instruments used to measure the atmospheric wind. We begin with the pilot balloon or also called as the theodolite. A meteorological balloon that is filled with gas lighter than air. When the pilot balloon is used in conjunction with a theodolite it is used to determine the speed and direction of winds at different levels of the atmosphere. It is similar to an engineer's transit. It consists of a sighting telescope mounted so that it is free to rotate around a horizontal and a vertical axis and has graduated scales so that the angles of rotation may be measured while tracking the pilot balloon. The elevation angles and azimuths of the balloon are recorded from the theodolite and these data at the end of the flight which may last for more than an hour are plotted to a plotting board. The wind speed and direction at selected levels are calculated either by trigonometric methods or graphical methods. Night observation is accomplished by attaching a lit paper lantern to the balloon. Next, we have the Rawinsand. The Rawinsand is an electronic device used for measuring wind velocity, pressure, temperature and humidity aloft. It is also attached to a balloon and as it rises through the atmosphere, it makes the required measurements. Next, we proceed with the instruments used to measure evaporation. We begin with the pitch evaporometer. It consists of a 32 cm long graduated tube of 1 cm inside diameter. It is closed at one end. The other end of the tube is open and has flat edge. 
there is a disc and clamp arrangement by which this end can be covered by a filter paper. The tube is filled up with distilled water. The open end is then covered by filter paper supported by the disc and the clamp. The evaporometer is then hung in inverted position. The water in the tube is soaked by the filter paper which moves rapidly outward through the paper and ultimately gets evaporated. The rate of loss of water from the tube gives the evaporation rate. This instrument is very sensitive to winds. Next, we have the sunken evaporation pan. It is a galvanized iron pan about 183 cm in diameter and 61 cm deep. It is buried in the ground keeping 10 cm height above the ground. The water is filled in the pan the level of which is generally kept 1 cm above ground level. The rate of water loss from the pan gives rate of evaporation. Because of its size this evaporometer gives good index of lake evaporation. The pan has a coefficient of about 0.95 by which the observed evaporation is multiplied to compute lake evaporation. Sometimes a floating pan may also be used to simulate natural conditions. The coefficient of floating pan is seen to be about 0.8. Next, we have the sunshine measuring instruments. We begin with the Campbell Stokes Sunshine Recorder. A sunshine recorder is a device that records the amount of sunshine at a given location or region at any time. The results provide information about the weather and climate as well as the temperature of a geographical area. This information is useful in meteorology, science, agriculture, tourism, and other fields. It has also been called a heliograph. Next, we have the pyre heliometer. A pyre heliometer is an instrument for measurement of direct beam solar irradiance. Sunlight enters the instrument through a window and is directed onto a thermopile which converts heat to an electrical signal that can be recorded. The signal voltage is converted via a formula to measure watts per square meter. That is now the list of some of our weather measuring instruments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the notification bell before you exit.